Welcome to the Grit Daily Startup. I'm your host, Sebastian Rusk, and this is a podcast about what goes on behind the scenes at startups. The good, the bad, and the gritty. Let's dive in. Hi, friends. Welcome to the show. My guest on this episode is Dr. Nadir Kazi. Dr. Kazi leads a renowned team of licensed physicians specializing in cosmetic dermatology and plastic surgery in Orange County, California. It wasn't always like this, though. Dr. Kazi started out working for a group of doctors and was told that, well, that way was the only way things could be done in that world of cosmetic surgery. Dr. Kazi did not believe that was the case. In fact, he knew it wasn't, and he knew there was a better way. So he ventured out on his own into the world of startup, creating his own practice, and has now grown it into an extremely, extremely successful practice with a team of licensed physicians alongside him, providing the best quality in the world of cosmetic surgery. Friends, help me welcome to the show, Dr. Nadir Kazi. Dr. Kazi, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Sebastian. Hey, it's great to have you here. We love telling stories of the startup world. We, I understand you've got quite the story of creating your own brand and business too. We talk about the, the good, the bad, and the gritty, we like to say here on, on the show and really give some context uh, to the story of how your brand actually became what it is uh, today. So, for, for starters, to kick things off, let's back up a little bit and let's talk about the beginning of the story when this all actually started to take shape in your mind and then started to become a reality. And then, of course, we'll get into the, the good, the bad and the gritty aspects of all of that, too, and then talk about what you're primarily focused on as far as your business and brand right now. So where did the story begin? Sure. I mean, I always had an interest in the aesthetic world um, since I suffer from severe cystic acne as a a teenager uh, kind of focused a lot on just skincare and just improving my skin texture and scars. And so it was something I was kind of thinking about, um, but I wasn't too sure about how to go about it myself. So I thought, well, you know, after doing medical school and, and doing residency, I'll work with a group and then just um, that'll probably be satisfying enough for me. Um, but I started to realize that I really couldn't do things the way I wanted to do it, the, just the, the level of work that I wanted to do um, and at the style and my approach to its patients would have been different than just a way that more a little bit more corporate. And so I started to kind of formulate ways to see how I could do things myself with my own brand and um, especially by utilizing social media, which started to really take off during my residency and then especially um, but when I was uh, working as a physician, started to really pay attention to just the trends that, you know, you could get your name out there without really much fanfare. You could just uh, do it yourself and just with high quality work, you could start getting noticed. And so um, that's kind of when I started realizing that maybe I could do this actually, because I do understand social media pretty well. And um, maybe I could actually just present myself just on this and start showing, showcasing my work and getting myself out there independently. So you were working under, you were working with another doctor's group and decided to go off on your own. Correct. Yeah. Just a much larger group. And then just realized that, you know, what I really want to do is just do things my style. Right. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to have your own practice and being able to do that. So how, how long were you part of the, the larger group? How long did it take you to decide, you know what, there, there's a better way, which is my way, in my opinion, and I want to do, and I want to do that. So how did the, how did the transition take place? Uh, it took about through two to three years, really, of just working with the larger corporations to to figure out that there is a way to do this independently. And and, and really, the way I mean, medicine is a little bit different than other fields because it's just kind of daunting that they the bigger corporations do have like this lock on a lot of healthcare practitioners, and they've made it so that you have you really should be underneath them pretty much for life. They kind of, we call it golden handcuffs that they place. Um, and so it's a little bit daunting because you think, well, you're going to get rid of, you know, you're not going to get your retirement. You're not going to get all the healthcare, all those type of things. So it turns out it's not as big of a, a problem as you think. Yeah. I think that's a, just a fear of loss that a lot of uh, companies, corporations, and individuals have at times when they've got a group of 
similar um, um, individuals working with them, for them, wh- whatever the case may be. And then you quickly realize, you know, if being a, a an entrepreneur at heart, you realize there's you're constantly asking yourself a question of there, there's there's got to be a better way. And I'm sure that there is. And is, is what this person telling me accurate. And in your case, it wasn't because you can, you proved it wrong to say, you know, there is, there is ways to plan for a future, have a retirement, do all the, you know, check all the, the job boxes, uh, you know, if you will, how were things in the beginning when you made that first transition? Well, it's, I think every entrepreneur basically has the same story where it's very difficult in terms of just mental fortitude, just keeping, keep going. And, you know, you're gonna have a lot of people questioning you and doubting you. And uh, you just have to really realize that you've done your homework and you're willing to put in the work and the rest really does end up falling in place eventually. Um, But it's just when that click, that moment that it clicks, you know, it could take, you know, a year, it could take longer. It just, uh, at some point it does though. And just kind of getting to that is really where it's difficult. And I read earlier that you decided to open up your office in one of the most competitive markets in the United States the beautiful Orange County, California, but you had very little money and you needed ex- expensive equipment. How, how did all those things get pieced together? Yeah. So what I decided, I was thinking to myself that what works really nicely for social media, it's not really just fancy equipment. It's really just results. And that's what people are focused on. And so what I was just, you know what, I'm, I'm going to just do this bare bones as possible because I just don't have any capital. And so what I'll do is I'll, as I go along, I'll just get some filler, get some results, that show what I could do. And then from there, really start getting a lot more relationships with patients. And then uh, they start referring their friends. And that's really kind of how things took off just by showcasing results at a very minimal amount that you could spend. Yeah. Word of mouth travels quick with something like that. Cause it's such a, it's such a cosmetic surgery is such a personal decision that, you know, obviously the end result that everyone wants is a good one. And you, you, of course, as the doctor wanting that too. And when they get that, what's the first thing we do when something good happens to us, we run out and tell everybody we know about it. So that beats as you, as you, as you've experienced and in time would tell that word of mouth far exceeds anything traditional advertising can do to, to really growing and building your business because it, it re- never really stops just as long as you continue to do a great job. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, you can see, see like six degrees of separations for to this day for some of the patients, you know, it's like someone knows someone, 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 someone. And then it's like, that was one of my earlier patients, for example. You know, it's kind of interesting actually how the whole thing works it really matters. Just having happy patients or happy customers are and they're uh, not necessarily going to write a review, but they will tell their friends, you know, if they're happy with things. So it says you now you're working with expensive lasers and equipment and all of the everything that a, that a air quotes larger marketing but budget would require. Has has that been has that allowed you and enabled you to really improve the practice overall? Or are these just additional bells and whistles that come with the territory as the as the practice continues to grow? Both. I mean, I've actually always loved those tools. It's just, I couldn't afford it. But, but, you know, as I got along and I became successful at things, I was able to just to get pretty much every piece of equipment that I've ever wanted for treating particular skin conditions. And it's worked out amazingly well. And uh, once that started going uh, on, again, social media, so you're seeing more results for this, these type of devices, then it really picked up exponentially, uh, you know, over the past couple of years now too. I, I find it funny that you're all the naysayers when you were going out on your own would tell you that you're never going to make it because you can't compete because you can't afford to advertise. Uh, and now that it's a complete, it was the complete, your, your experience was a complete polar opposite of what they predicted would happen and take place on here because you led really with service and with and proof, you know, the, the, the proof being in the pudding of, Hey, what does my work actually do? Well, here, this is what, the, this isn't me saying I, I did a great job. This is my patient saying I did a great job. It's kind of funny how that, that works out when you focus really on how you're delivering to your clients and taking care of them and the experience that they're actually having. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's actually, like you said, it is interesting. And one thing that kind of helped, which was interesting was that I went to a conference at some point, and then I kind of met some physicians who just didn't do that well within the field and are kind of, uh, you know, saying things that, uh, you know, oh, don't go into this and don't do this, don't do that. And I kind of just learned a little bit about what they went, what they did that was wrong for them. 
And it actually helped a lot because I saw, okay, wait a second. If everybody's complaining about how they're just overburdened with debt early on, maybe I shouldn't do it that way. Maybe I should try to do it my own way and come up with a different way of uh, getting successful instead of just buying a bunch of devices right off the bat. Right. I mean, everybody wants to play with lasers, but you know, you got it. It all comes in due time as, uh, uh, you know, as the as the business allows. So you talk a lot about social media really being a, a strong catalyst for you being able to spread the word and get content out of here. What what or out into the world rather? What strategies did you utilize? What platforms did you find the best success with? Obviously, Instagram and Facebook are very um, uh, very visual uh, tools, and a lot of brands have been able to showcase significant things like that. But where where did you find your biggest area of growth with social? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Each one of these social media companies, and I would include TikTok with this now, is they, they basically have their own ecosystem and their own style, basically, that works for their audience. And so for Facebook, you know, just uh, uh, doing live videos actually worked really, really well. Um, and, and just showing as I'm doing the injections and talking and being authentic uh, works really nicely. Um, Instagram, you know, it's again, we want authentic content, but a little bit more curated, a little bit more like polished videos. Um, and then with TikTok, it's like really rapid type of videos that they, that patient, that, uh, that clients want or the audience wants. Um, and, but they still want that authenticity within each of these type of areas, you know, that old way of like, where it's this influencer type of look and, you know, just like taking photos, posting it and it's getting a million likes. It just doesn't work anymore. People want to have this authenticity. They want to know who the person is. They want to. Uh, they want to believe that person. They don't want to think that this is everything's just an advertisement for a brand. And uh, so, as more that you kind of go out there and show that and talk to them as just regular people, uh, the more engagement you get, and just the more referrals you'll start getting. I'm being human. Imagine that, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, instead of that, you know, really curated type of image that a lot of people seek, it really just, it doesn't work anymore. No, it doesn't. And I think people are sick of the guru, sick of the influencer, sick of the, you know, the inauthenticity of content. They really want to see when I, when I think of the type of content that you're creating for, for your practice, um, I think of the world of chiropractors too. There's a lot of chiropractors that have done a great job as of recent, I'd say over the past 12 to 16 months of just simply adjusting their clients and filming it and posting it on there. I mean, if you've never been to a chiropractor before and your back hurts and you watch one of those videos, it's very encouraging. Same applies for your for your area of practice too. If someone's not happy with their appearance or know that there's something that can be improved or, or um, yeah, improved upon and they see one of your patients raving about a similar procedure that went and took place, chances are they're going to reach out. And I think that's, that's going to continue to, well, word of mouth's always been around, right? I think that social media just put it on, you know, steroids uh, for being able to, you know, allow the word to travel uh, just that much faster, but also how we're finding out about it. It used to be, we'd call and say, Hey, did you hear about this restaurant? And did you like it? And we talked to people and, but now we, we'd still talk to people. We do it in a different type of, of, of format on here. And that's going to continue. And I think that your thought process of, Hey, listen, if I can just care about people the most I possibly can and do an incredible job with them and then document that process, we continue to rinse and repeat that. And I correct me if I'm wrong. That's, that's essentially what you're living right now. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the essential goal has basically been just constant results and consistent results. And then the rest kind of comes with it. So whether it's with the high tech tools or just with my hands, I can just get results. And from there showcase it, hopefully it's the, it's the client what lets me and we, the rest kind of starts getting driven just by that. Yeah. You, I love how you say if the, if the guest lets me, because it, you know, you could, and you're in Orange County, California, you know, LA is not too far from you and there's not exactly a, a lack of celebrities in Orange County. So I'm sure um, you, you've, you've had some of that experience too. And not everybody always obviously wants to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely some, some clients who are more higher end, but uh, people don't want to showcase everything, but there's surprisingly a lot of people that are actually happy to support brands and you'd be surprised uh, just, you know, even in my industry, which is really about privacy, things of that nature. Um, so surprisingly, because they see me so often on social media, they just trust me and they think that, okay, you know, I'm, yeah, I love the, the work that you do. I'm happy to, sh to help you out also. And, you know, you'd be surprised that how many people are willing to talk about or, you know, share their experience, their happy experience with about your brand. 
Yeah, nothing sells better or solidifies, you know, who you are as a brand and a and a, and a physician uh, than that. You know, I got to ask as a cosmetic um, physician, do you ever have to cut anybody off? <laughs> Not pun intended on there, but like, all right, time out. We've done everything we need to do on here because I've, I've heard that happen before. Uh, in fact, I've asked my dermatologist that, that same question before of like, hey, is there like, is there anything, is there such thing as too much cosmetic surgery? Absolutely. Yeah, there is. And of course, I mean, and actually it's something that we were trained in recognizing and it's really, sometimes you just have to do it from the get-go. Uh, but sometimes as you're going along with someone, you're realizing that there's just it's this really abnormal uh, level that they want to get to of perfection. It's just not achievable. And it's not healthy to try to achieve that. Yeah. And so you really have to explain that this is this. Uh, not a good route to go down and uh, we're not going to be putting more filler in, for example, in an area that's already volumized um, or doing some other types of treatments that just are not necessary. Because number one thing is we're still, you know, uh, we still care about the person. We want to make sure that we're doing everything for their sake and we're still being healthy for them. That makes complete sense. And you're, you're also being socially responsible, you know, just to, just in the work that you do in general, you know, with that, um, you know, there's been, you know, we've, we've, but we've heard crazy stories over, over the past years that have taken place. And all you got to do is turn on television <laughs> to find out, just to see like, wait a second, maybe we should have thrown the brakes on a, a little before that. So I love that. Uh, I love that that's part of the practice, part of the process and really part of the integrity of, of exactly what you do. Well, it's great to see how you've been able to go from, you know what, I'm here and I'm doing what I set out to do, but I'm not able to do it my way. And I think there's a better way. And you had people telling you, no, 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 it'll never happen. And you continued to stay the course and say, yes, 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 it will happen. And then we're smart by leveraging social media really to get the word out and continue to build your practice. And which brings you to exactly where you're at today, having a successful um, practice, uh, helping people uh, improve their lives and their looks and et cetera, and what they look. So congratulations on all that and, and really surviving the world of startup. Thanks so much, Sebastian. Absolutely. Thanks again for your time. And for you want to connect with uh, Dr. Kazi, all of his links and contact information will be in the show notes of this episode. That is the description of this podcast episode. In case you were wondering what in the world a show note is until next time, friends. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Grit Daily Startup. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you consume podcasts. This way you'll get updates as new episodes become available. This podcast is brought to you by GritDaily.com, the premier startup news hub. More information at GritDaily.com. Once again, I'm your host, Sebastian Rusk. Until next time, friends. Friends.